Geologists have made, perhaps the most dreaded revelation about the Yellowstone supervolcano. The volcanic caldera, has been under severe perception for a really long time, because of the peril, that accompanies the super well of lava's ejection, and presently, the signs that it's going to emit, are starting to show. This declaration of its emission approached, after an uncommon gas that has been caught in the Earth's hull for billions of years, was distinguished around the spring of gushing lava. What sort of intriguing gas is this? And how could it be an indication, that shows the Yellowstone supervolcano's eruption? Go along with us, as we investigate how helium-4 gas at Yellowstone supervolcano, demonstrates an impending ejection. Situated in the territory of Wyoming, is a public park which likewise has a functioning super fountain, of liquid magma underneath it. This well of lava is named the Yellowstone Caldera, with the force of its emission sorted to an extraordinary extent, strong enough to crash any type of life close to it, without leaving the other adjoining states of the US to this end, each and every movement, or change coming from the super fountain of liquid magma, is constantly noticed. And furthermore, there are considerations and speculations happening, about the Yellowstone spring of gushing lava on the grounds, that, one more emission is believed to be close. Along these lines, a body named the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory YVO was framed, and is devoted exclusively to all undertakings, in regards to the supervolcano's action. This body, were additionally the ones who looked into this intriguing gas, that showed an up-and-coming eruption of the super spring of gushing lava. This uncommon gas is old helium, one that hasn't been seen for quite a while, and it's nothing but a decent sign. The Yellowstone National Park's natural aquifers, springs and other hydro-warm highlights, are known to discharge a few sorts of gases, from profound inside the earth. These gases included neon, argon, carbon dioxide, methane and helium. However, the outflows of helium gas, isn't in overflow. When contrasted with others, helium can regurgitate of volcanic rocks, that drive aqueous action. However, for Yellowstone's situation, that isn't where a large portion of the helium is distinguished to come from. As per the exploration done by researchers from the US Geographical Review, it ends up being that, the recreation area's gas radiates somewhere down in rocks, where it's been saved for a huge number of years, before it was even found. Beside the way that helium isn't bounteously present at the Yellowstone, it is the second most bountiful component, in the whole universe. Helium on Earth, can be tracked down in two fundamental structures, yet generally, all helium occurs as helium-4, since it has two protons, and two neutrons separately. This kind of helium, can be delivered during the radioactive rot of weighty components like uranium. A little part contrasted with around one out of many happenings, as helium-3, which has two protons and one neutron. Most of helium-3, has been available on Earth, since the planet's beginning, and is a remnant of the material, that were the first to frame the planet. The proportion of helium-3 to helium-4, completely shifts, and thus, researchers can really use that proportion, to figure out the assessed origin, of any helium they go over. Other weighty components like uranium, are more clashing with minerals found in the world's mantle, so these components channel up to the covering, and in that cycle, their rot makes helium-4 metal materials, which have less of the weighty radioactive components. They don't frame as much helium-4, so the helium present there is significantly as helium-3. The aqueous framework at Yellowstone National Park, is a high measure of helium-3, and researchers trust this to be the confirmation that, the Yellowstone area of interest, originates from profound inside the mantle, and has a moderately straight way, driving up. Anyway, it appears to be that, helium-4 has a more mind-boggling excursion, while coming up to the surface. Specialists and researchers, from the US Topographical Review have made social event gas tests, from the locales in, and around Yellowstone, for a time of 10 years. While gathering these examples, they were additionally performing isotopic examination of the helium, carbon dioxide, and different types of gases in those examples. 
From their exploration and investigation, researchers found out that, the amount of helium-4 that radiates from Yellowstone, is more than the different significant degrees, they would have expected to find somewhere else. Other than this, they likewise figured out that, a colossal piece of Yellowstone's helium-4, is probably going to be no less than a huge number of years old, or maybe even billions of years old, in light of the computations made by researchers and scientists. They joined out all the gas we have now, and concentrated them. With this, they reasoned that there is a high opportunity, that this gas comes from rocks inside an extremely old crust surface, known to be covered near the area. This extremely old pocket of outside layer known to be from the Archaean period, was made over a long time back. It contains uranium, and other radioactive materials, that have been continuously rotting which most likely, gave space for the high convergences of helium-4 to develop underground. The researchers then, at that point, hypothesized further, that perhaps around quite a while back, the Yellowstone area of interest sliced through these old rocks, and thus, they started delivering the helium power that remained there along with helium-3 which was raised from the mantle. Presently you could imagine that this revelation, sounds sort of fascinating for anybody charmed by the miracles of Yellowstone, yet, for researchers this disclosure appears to be alarming on the grounds that, there could be more significant ramifications joined to it. Helium and other honorable gases, are utilized to assess groundwater reverberation types. Researchers frequently accept the more helium present in the water, the more longer that water has been sitting in the stones holding it. Anyway, this exploration and investigation of the helium at Yellowstone, makes sense now that a portion of these suppositions, particularly helium-4, which is delivered by the consistent rot of components was found exclusively inside the stones, and portions of the neighborhood spring. But when exactly did it occur? That we don't know yet. However, helium can be flighty on occasion as it can come out of the depth into a framework from unforeseen spots. It very well, may be in a pocket of old stone, or a magma source, so the dates in past computations, particularly those from springs in volcanic regions or close to quake shortcomings may be extremely inaccurate, because of the additional helium included. Anyway, researchers are accustomed to managing new data, that goes against and can ultimately change long-held speculations, since that is the idea of science, thus, all things must be considered. In spite of all these, what else could helium at any point, inform us regarding volcanoes? Well, the tale about helium discharge, connected with volcanic movement, all began after one of Yellowstone's sizable quakes struck, and a stunning occasion, resulted after individuals were thinking of their own thoughts, tossing around conceivable outcomes that creatures were running from the recreation area, in fear of the dangers towards the seismic tremor, which would cause an enormous eruption, and that helium outflows were ascending in the Yellowstone caldera. Some people therefore considered this helium outflows, as an indication that an emission was coming. Tragically, these speculations were off base, since it wasn't the creatures that they should start with. Likewise, it worked out that helium could possibly give more experiences on observing a volcano. Despite the fact that helium can emerge out of two fundamental sources, these two wellsprings of helium anyway, have a few flavors. Mantle determined early stage helium, is overwhelmed by the light in neutron, while the rot of components in the outside layer, will deliver the heavier neutron otherwise, called an alpha radiation, one of the manners in which components rot radioactively. This implies that, when you analyze the isotopic proportion of helium that is delivered in soils, natural aquifers, or welts, you can figure out how much helium being gotten from either digesting of magma coming from the mantle, or from the radioactive rot of uranium, and thorium in the covering. In the event that the helium-3 or helium-4 is high, the mantle source is administering. On the off chance that the helium-3 or helium-4 is low, the cross source is overwhelming. At the point when we discuss these proportions ordinarily, we contrast them with the helium-3 and 4 proportion in the environment, called Ra which is around 0.1384. 
So in the event that the helium proportions will generally be accounted for as various of our rays, the mantle sources will be something like 16 Ra, and for additional crustal sources, it is at 1 to 3 Ra. Two late examinations, took a gander at helium outflows in dynamic volcanic regions. The first is taking a gander at the occasions, that happened on October 12, 2011 eruption in the Canary Islands. A concentrate by Pandran, and others in topography, inspected the connection between helium outflows estimated in soils across the island, with helium-3 and 4 in water from a well on the island. What they found is that as the quakes expanded during pre-fall into late summer, so did the helium outflows across the island increased from 9 kg each day to 24 kg, each day. Only before the ejection, helium, likewise expanded from a few Ra to about 8 Ra emission. Others propose the tremors, made breaks for the helium to get away from like a characteristic deep oil drilling process, as the magma rose, and disintegrated under the island. Anyway, the crustal helium low Ra was additionally wrecked by the mantle helium higher Ra, from the magma. In this way, the nearer the magma got to the surface, the more helium was delivered, and the higher the helium became, after the emission. The helium emanations diminished, with the diminishing seismicity. At the point when seismicity got back later on, the helium outflows returned up again, yet, the helium-3, and helium-4 proportion didn't. Rather it remained under 5 Ra, recommending that the helium was coming from the outside layer, that makes up the island, and not a mantle determined magma. The new seismic tremors in the northern piece of the island, made breaks of the helium to escape yet, the helium wasn't completely connected with new magma. The rate of helium being delivered, doesn't let us know much, as helium, like any gas may be freed by tremors under a fountain of liquid magma. We really want to comprehend the proportion of helium, to understand whether, the progressions in discharges are truly connected with magma. So, for some reason is that, it is certainly not a simple method for estimating helium-3 and 4 proportions, in the field. However, tests must be returned to a lab to be dissected. In this way, the event that we just considered, cannot tell us how much helium being delivered, at the fountain of liquid magma. In this case, we will just be getting a piece, of the full picture in vision. This obviously demonstrate, the way that we can glean some useful knowledge from estimating helium emanations, and their isotopic synthesis. At Yellowstone, there is a critical volume of put away helium in the outside layer, that can be delivered by processes, irrelevant to whatever might prompt an eruption. Out of nowhere, we are moving towards having the option, to all the more likely expectations due to the activity, at the fountain of liquid magma. Yet, once in a while, you should be mindful, so as not to get out of hand, without seeing precisely the exact thing occurring. The inhabitants of the Yellowstone region, feel uncomfortable and restless about their well-being, following the report about this helium discharges, and how it very well, may be an indication of a huge eruption. They could really start packing now, and searching for safe regions. In spite of this fact from the helium discharges, researchers found that the Yellowstone super spring of gushing lava, holds more liquid stone than they had assessed, and that simply, is by all accounts, an affirmation about the supervolcano's impending eruption. The level of magma rocks under a well of lava, assists researchers, and specialists with figuring out how close, it very well may be, to erupting. And presently, researchers have quite recently found a comparable, yet, stunning data, about how much fluid magma lies under the Yellowstone supervolcano. Magma comprises of rocks, and gems at different phases of strength. The more dissolved, the magma is, the more probable a spring of gushing lava is to erupt. Two enormous supplies loaded with magma, exist underneath the Yellowstone caldera. One that is around 3 to 10 miles underneath the surface, and one more that is 12 to 30 miles deeper beneath. According to past exploration, researchers felt that the shallower repository, was generally strong with only 5 to 15% of softened rock. However, 
With the help of using strong supercomputers to reanalyze existing seismic information from beyond 20 years, they accept that at, the extension is really 16 to 20 percent. Beneath the edge of the fluid of magma, there is around 35 to 50 percent that researchers accept will set a start to an eruption. While the new discoveries don't change the well of lava's carrying capacity, they really do address a major improvement in our capacity to comprehend what's underneath Yellowstone, says Carrie Cooper, an Earth and planetary researcher at the University of California. Earth hasn't made more fluid magma, rather researchers says, they currently have a more precise comprehension of what was at that point there. Yellowstone supervolcano situated in northwestern Wyoming, in Yellowstone National Park, is one of the biggest volcanoes on the planet. It's emitted on various occasions, over the past 2.1 million years, including three monstrous eruptions that covered the atmosphere in debris. The Yellowstone caldera, which extends 30 to 45 miles wide was formed during one of those ejections, sometimes back. Seismic waves delivered by tremors should travel through layers of materials inside the Earth before its arrival at the surface. Seismometers on a superficial level identifies the waves which bounce back when they arrive at the magma. So, analysts can utilize the time it takes for the waves to arrive at the seismometers while gathering experiences about how much magma is beneath the ground. Past investigates have expected that seismic waves radiate directly from the tremor toward the seismometer. However the truth of their process is significantly more uncertain. This time, supercomputers, displayed with seismic waves finders, are planned in three aspects, which provided researchers with a more complete image of the magma underneath the Yellowstone. Stay tuned for additional data from our researchers and specialists about these variables that can cause the Yellowstone supervolcano's monstrous eruption. What do you think? Will the Yellowstone eruption happen anytime soon? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel.